Well, it's been a while since I've done one of these style of videos. And hello everyone, Brian here for Ginger Prime. Uh, what this is, what this video is, player feedback, is a conversation with y'all's comments, uh, highlighting some really good comments or some really bad comments, uh, and then basically engaging with them to try and facilitate just a great discussion especially as it relates around video games. I haven't done one of these in a while, so hopefully I'm going to be able to bring this style back to the channel more here in 2022. If you're in the future, hopefully that ends up proving true. Only you will be able to tell. Um, but overall, I think I've had some very interesting uh, comments on my recent Is Destiny 2 Worth It? especially as it relates to the Witch Queen video, I thought I would highlight them. Now, there's not too many to highlight in this video, so you can always feel free to leave comments on this one. Others, I'll be sure to try and grab some of the most interesting, positive, negative. Honestly, there's no real rules, so like you can try to go super negative and might get ignored, or maybe you'll get highlighted. I don't know. Uh, the brain works the way the brain works. But we've got Crowd Core Games, then we also have Dayton D, Musa, and New Spin. Those are going to be what we uh, highlight today. First, let's start off with some of the best or <laughs> start off with some of the most feedback we've got, especially as it relates to the Is It Worth It video. What a terrible review for somebody who wants to get back into the game. Maybe try talking about the end game, the loot, why the game is trash before and what has improved to make it worth playing, etc. Instant dislike. And this is kind of also mirrored by Dayton D. Says, I've watched the entire video and still feel like I don't know nothing about what this expansion brings. It is just a new campaign. You mentioned avoid rework, but say very little. I found out the comments that it's a skill tree rework. Uh, you say PvP is great, but literally nothing else after that. Is uh, somebody who uh, took a hiatus from Destiny and doesn't really follow the channel. I really don't feel like this was a complete waste of my time. Or I really do feel like this was a complete waste of my time. Uh, you came up on the top of my search list so congrats on that so essentially what this in, they're pointing out and one of the things that and this is also something that you guys can provide feedback on uh for future and i i hesitate to call them reviews that's why i usually label them as coffee chats that's what green is if you actually look at the playlist that's what the playlist is called namely because i feel like what they're asking for i deferred that to a guide i actually personally look to guides over reviews a review is an opinion uh, you know, a coffee chat is an opinion and I don't necessarily use those to rate whether I want to play a game. And so I'm obviously putting out my bias. Now, clearly Dayton D Musa, like they have a different expectation. They did not get that met. Now, overall, that video is incredibly well liked. So I want to highlight these in contrast to the, you know, the overall positivity that people seem to really enjoy about the video is that I tend to focus more on the technical side in guides because I look to guides actually more as a form of a review without essentially the opinion it's always interesting when it comes to reviewing and opinions within gaming and gaming culture because i'm going to speak to myself but i think you know maybe this is true you can let me know uh when i look to a review it's more to basically affirm my own beliefs and not necessarily to get insight now not saying that's for everybody but overall uh, I look to guides to really kind of get to the nitty gritty of whether I'm going to like a game or not like a game. And I sense like the, I used to be a huge review snob. You should know this about me. There was a point in time where if a, if a game did not have a nine plus, I wasn't even interested in it. I was such a review snob and I've since gone away from that. And I think that's actually a really healthy thing for me as a gamer. And so that's where I bring that personal bias and strategy into my content. And not necessarily is it going to always land with everybody because clearly obviously expectations to what is it worth it review you know video versus a guide tends to bring and so i would be very interested in y'all's follow-up feedback do you want to see something more technical brought into the coffee chat especially as it relates specifically to a is it a review is it worth it uh let me know because i i am happy to kind of play around with the format and with the video itself uh, that's why guides tend to be a little bit longer because I try to get into the exactly what they're looking at. And I actually did reply to them. I'm like, you might be interested more in a guide for that specific targeted information as opposed to just me being excited or me being frustrated, a pure opinion piece in that way. I've also gotten some kind of feedback on as it relates to kind of when I cover video game news, as I tend to just focus in on news and just the core information at hand and try to keep my opinion as much out of it as possible and usually save that for a coffee chat because i don't know like sometimes i just want to know the facts and not necessarily what somebody thinks about it and so i'm just kind of putting my own personal bias in there obviously i think traditionally people say it's your channel do whatever you want and uh but i'm really genuinely interested in kind of like feedback on 
Do you watch those videos? Do you wish that they did a deeper dive? Have you like always had that kind of feedback on your mind, but haven't shared it um, or, or what have you? So I, I'm generally curious if you if you got the time, uh, let me know. Now, I want to focus here on new spin as uh, our, our next comment. He says, I didn't know you were a Destiny player as another Final Fantasy 14 guy. What are your thoughts on Destiny's story? I know that they don't do a good job of keeping the story 100 percent cohesive, but I do think that it would change a lot of opinions on the game if they did some major uh, something major to fix the story, possibly release a totally separate version of the game that just tells the story and then at the end transfers your character into the live game. Well, and so as a part of being a Destiny player, I've been playing since beta. Like I didn't really get into content creation during the phase of like Destiny 1. It was really like some time in Destiny 2 where I started actually covering it. I publicly quit the game over how frustrated I was with the core of Destiny. That's actually still one of my number one videos over and worked the game. I think it finally got passed, which was great to see. So thank you for that. Uh, and I said, basically, here's what would bring me back. And they did those things. And so I came back. But I took a massive break, especially with Beyond Light. Destiny and me have been at odds in terms of schedule and life. But I think so far what I'm seeing when with Witch Queen, it feels way more, I guess, right up my alley, what I'm looking for in terms of a game and how I and how I can play games right now. And that's just, you know, awesome because I really have always enjoyed this game. As far as the story as a Final Fantasy XIV player and, uh, and Destiny, I actually, uh, I think Final Fantasy XIV does a much better job at presenting the story. Uh, in terms of its cutscenes and how that goes about it, especially over the course of time. However, Destiny's voice acted. However, Destiny gets the expedition. How, like, I would, if Final Fantasy XIV can learn more from Destiny, I would really appreciate that. But uh, that's, I think that's wishing for fishes and, and rainbows or something like that. I don't, I don't know of a saying that really kind of like bundles that up. I just say stupid things from time to time. And sometimes people like that. And sometimes they get really pissed off when I say stupid things like, weird phrases that make no sense so anyway you know it is what it is but at its core uh i actually enjoy destiny's story destiny uh its story actually lends itself better to content creation and not that i'm getting into like lore story content creation but in terms of final fantasy 14 um the experience is actually wanting to see people experience the story and so when it comes down to lore it gets very challenging to kind of present that information there's people who actively want it but the volume of it, obviously, like if you look at like My Name is Bife versus, you know, F this Asher, uh, there's obviously a big discrepancy in terms of it. Because I think 14 delivers a story that's better under, you know, you can understand without having to go to extra sources. Now, then you have within the Destiny community, a huge lore community that's stitching everything together, running things by each other, having this extra conversation. And that lends itself better to content creation, which I think lends itself better to having a presence on YouTube and that social media. So ultimately, like both are doing incredibly well. Uh, Destiny in and of itself through its story and through its content creators, I think gets more visibility, uh, not just within the gameplay, but more visibility as a part of like just watch time because it isn't necessarily so cohesive. Uh, so there's that as a possibility, as a positive, you know, if we're looking at it from positive both ways, but it is what it is. Um, as far as it goes, like playing through the story, honestly, I always feel like the best thing to do in RPGs is the story so far. I wish more games adapted that aspect to present kind of the core story without having to go down every rabbit hole. I wish Final Fantasy 14 would do that. I wish Destiny would do that. I wish every game would do that. Um, you could kind of basically kind of li lines with your idea and have a totally separate game. Just like, nah, I don't necessarily think that they need to play through it because ultimately you'll find a, probably find a player who's just going to skip, 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 and then go like, what's going on? I don't know. Um, but that is essentially kind of our, our modern major uh, navigation here with the, <laughs> with the game. So that's just my thoughts. Hopefully... Uh, that was interesting. Now, Crowdcore uh, brings in some of the most, I guess, heavily uh, fitting critique of Destiny itself. And I figured they, you know, we could talk about it point by point. It says, so uh, tell me, does this DLC fix any of the following flaws? Paying transmog and pay getting seasonal content. No, it doesn't. Uh, light level increase, making every DLC's uh, content irrelevant whenever it increases. Uh, I don't think it makes it irrelevant content in terms of how like, but it puts you back on that same kind of power trend. Um, but people are going to approach that differently. I get fatigued by that. I, I ultimately, it's like, that's why if I, as long as I'm not sitting here trying to actively always like have the best and get there quicker, like it's every three, you know, every three months, all of a sudden you're having to do this epic sprint. I get fatigued, but no, it, they're, they're going to keep increasing the power. I think they could do, I would love to see something where it was just like a, a power level for the expansion. And then as soon as you hit it, you're, you're good. Uh, but I think obviously the, the psychological side of it works. I've got a video that I'm working on on that i'd like to explore that just as a specific topic in the future 
the fact that since day one you can run past enemies and missions and some of the strikes um i don't understand that point on you know really like the just the fact that you can just run past enemies i, I you can do that pretty much in every game that that exists so that's going to be where it is uh area where you can just walk off the map with no effort yeah uh, that still exists <laughs> uh, a grindy and mindless end game consistently of bounty grinding once you've done the story and a few uh, uh, new raids and strikes I think that's a couple of points here. Um, you have like the seasonal content, like ultimately when you look at a game as a service, like you have a core, you know, especially if you're just there for the campaign, they, they don't ultimately have that. So you kind of have to kind of get into this content loop. The question is, is that, is that loop fun? Is that loop engaging? I find it's fun and engaging, but it's also important to take time away from that loop. It's going to, it's going to burn you out. And so what you end up seeing is you get see people who run at that loop really hard, really fast they never give themselves a break and then they get mad at it and that's going to tie back into the dailies concept the weeklies concept video that i hinted at a little bit ago um i don't think it's healthy for for gaming overall uh let's see here uh, a raid being almost impossible to get into unless you have friends to p to pay or play uh and know what you're doing already no i don't think so uh regarding the raid i actually am very against matchmaking and raids and i know i lose a lot of people on that because i'm a casual like i mean a hardcore casual i i, I go i go <laughs> I, I go between depends on how I feel for that day. The reason it ends up being is that from a game design perspective, this is from, I studied game design. I am a software engineer. Uh, I look at these issues very critically um, because essentially there is a convenience factor, but then there's also a content factor. So if you want to make things easier to get into and open it up for more people, like in the case of having, uh, you know, if, if having matchmaking, you either have to lower the content or you have to either police the people hardcore because you're going to end up having a lot of toxicity. Imagine getting into a content, getting matched with somebody and they don't have the ability to actually win the content. So you're just wasting your time. So matchmaking would ultimately just introduce the ability for people to waste your time. And ultimately you have that happen over and over again. It's going to be frustrating. Imagine matching into any particular normal content, like a dungeon in Final Fantasy 14 and never being able to clear it because you get matched with people who just don't know what they're doing. Occasionally you get matched with somebody who does and you're like, yes. Um, now what's the better solution? I think when it, to preserve content and game design so that you have that aspirational content you have content that shouldn't be just kind of steamrolled. Uh, you have to have systems in place to help bring people together so that you ultimately kind of get out of that shell where you don't, maybe don't have to communicate, but you can prove that you know what you're doing and things like that. It's a hard thing. And it's a hard decision. And the fact that they stuck with that, I think is really, really telling. They've made some concessions where, yeah, in terms of like trials, that makes sense. People just want to play and take part in that. Um, but ultimately when it comes down to the core game itself, when it comes to the raids, one of the things that I want to do here at this channel is helping get people through the raids. So if you're interested, you're looking for those uh, that kind of that community, we're here. That's what our goal is to help get people through the raids, get people through the content, do it, play it, have fun, and just keep it on repeat. That's the ultimate goal. Um, and I, I, I'm happy they haven't done that. I know that people advocate for matchmaking, but they don't advocate or understand the cost that's associated with it. A lot of, a lot of player choice goes away with matchmaking or cause everybody's like, oh, this game does that. This game does that. Well, go look at the community and see what the, like, oh yeah, it's really toxic. You know, you end up just kind of finding your own people anyway. So it's just kind of this proving around for people to get pissed off at you or the game or, and it creates a lot of drama online which is attention you know that gets marketing towards a game in a way if you think that every marketing piece in a positive sense and you know no no bad press etc anyway that's just my thoughts <laughs> feel free to just disagree i i'm not trying to convince you i'm just this is just where i come from uh, we, uh they still have server issues people stuck in queues and other dlc or dc uh, better believe that there are new flashy cosmetics. Bungie don't care that the game's broken. Bungie don't care that people like you are willing to pass off its flaws uh, and take away from free players PV content because you get to new story and somehow that's enough for you. But I ask you, how many times have you gotten story only for the light level to increase it and become not irrelevant anymore? I haven't actually run into the issue of my, my light level becoming irrelevant, especially as I kind of dip in and dip out. Every expansion, everybody gets put down to a normal level. I, I find that that takes off pressure from trying to have to level up other guns and actually gives me the ability to step away from the game itself and so it really comes down to what's my personalized engagement and i ultimately will always try to default into uh, being able to play multiple games i want to play final fantasy i want to play you know, destiny i'm gonna play hell street fighter 6 man i love fighting games i never take time for fighting games 
Um, and once I gave myself permission not to, I guess, be a like sweaty hardcore, always going to just da 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 da. I don't. Have, I'm not going to be first, guys. I got five kids. I got a job. I make YouTube videos for fun. Like I'm just not going to be the first, and so I just have to give my. I have to let other people have that. Um, maybe at some point in the future, that's going to change. But right now, like yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. Should it not bother you? Like no, no. If it if these things bother you, absolutely. Like just know where you stand. Just know where you stand. And so this is why I really want to highlight uh, this comment specifically because this is some of the, the frustration gamers have. I think it's important to have that conversation, important to be aware of that because maybe you're going to relate more to Crow than you relate to me. Maybe you're going to relate more to somebody in this comment section than you will relate to me. It's You don't have to relate to me. Like the, My job isn't to make you relate to me or, or bring you to my side of how I see things just to tell you how I see things. And if you do relate to me, that might help you in your decision. I find if you do like reviewers, like people who like, oh, okay, find the reviewer that's more like you and you're going to end up being happy. Who cares what the scores say? It's pointless. Find the person who you most relate to. And that's essentially where you're probably going to have a good, uh, you know, uh, experience with the games. They also have a good experience with because there's so many, so much nuance that never, I think really gets highlighted in a score. Anyway, uh, before I get on a rant about uh, like video game scores and the problems within them, uh, I, guys, that's going to be it. Those are the, co the comments. I don't know why I sucked at that word. Uh, those are the comments I want to highlight. Thank you guys for your time. Hopefully you have a great day. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video. But until then, take care. Yeah. It's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments. That's right. You know me when it comes to destiny. I'm off with a clam, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, yeah.